Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, a free site, BettingAngle.us, a free site. Let's talk boxing, but first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, they had some events yesterday hyping this Keith Thurman versus Manny Pacquiao fight. Now, as many of you know, one of my heartfelt life philosophies is that the best bets make themselves, right? If you're paying attention in a crowded room, and if you're looking at public opinion, sometimes you're going to stumble into a situation where there's a bubble, where for whatever reason, people are too caught up in the moment. And the truth is staring them in the face. So, what if I told you that Manny Pacquiao is fighting a guy who has only had one fight in two years? Right? One fight in the last two years. And that in that fight, against a big underdog, the guy had one of the worst rounds of his professional career. Now, given that hypothetical, do you think Pacquiao would win the fight? Right? A guy with one fight in the last two years, and he looked terrible in round seven of that fight. Now, what if I told you that in that fight against a guy with only one fight in the last two years Manny Pacquiao was the underdog right folks I don't believe we need additional facts here right I don't believe you have to be Nostradamus or Einstein to just look at that factual predicate and to think to yourself, wow, at a minimum, Pacquiao should be a live underdog. Well, let's go further. My online poll here, granted, it's unscientific, but the people who follow boxing on YouTube are the boxing hardcore, aren't they? Right? They're the people with an avid interest in boxing. They're the people who, in the middle of the week, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, even without a pay-per-view or the zone fight scheduled that weekend, want to keep up on the sport. Well, my online poll here has a few hundred votes. And interestingly, and you can find it in the community link here on the page, Keith Thurman, according to you, should be favored in this bout. Now let's revisit the one fight he's had in the last two years against Jose Cito Lopez. Marcos Viejas has done a spectacular job, the journalist interviewing Robert Garcia, Lopez's trainer, shortly after the Lopez Thurman match. Right now, Garcia, a gentleman, praises Thurman. Right? There isn't any ill will at all in the interview. Right? Garcia goes out of his way to call Thurman a champion, he acknowledges that his fighter was very close to taking the title in round seven. He even goes so far as to say that if his fighter was viewed as the favorite instead of the big underdog in that match, the referee might have stopped it. But while Garcia is praising Thurman, right? Garcia clearly admires Thurman's courage admires the fact that Thurman, consummate professional, uh, was able to recover from round seven, 
Um, Garcia doesn't dispute that Thurman won the match. But then when Marcos asks him the million dollar question, and at the time the Pacquiao fight had not been finalized, Viejas asks him simply, if Thurman fights Manny Pacquiao next, who wins that fight? And Garcia, I believe the video is up at fighthype.com or something like that. Garcia diplomatically says that if that fight is the next fight Thurman has, that he believes Manny Pacquiao wins that fight by decision. Now let's think it through. What Garcia is telling you is one of the most damning things that can be said. He's telling you that Thurman has the heart of a champion. That Thurman certainly has the desire to make it all the way back from the injury that kept him out of the ring. But that he's not ready for Pacquiao level competition. That Garcia, after watching Thurman fight an entire fight against his fighter, Garcia is telling you that Thurman, at this point of his comeback, is not Keith Thurman. The sharpness isn't there. Garcia goes on and he says, look, you know, Thurman will need multiple fights to be ready to fight a Manny Pacquiao. Right? Multiple fights. Now understand, Thurman fought Lopez this year at the end of January. This is a recent fight. That's where Thurman is right now. I know Thurman, a champion, doesn't want to use any excuses. Of course, Thurman's going to say rust is not a factor. After all, he's trying to sell tickets to the fight. He's an unbeaten fighter. He wants his fans to know, hey, I'll be ready. But understand, readiness sometimes isn't the fighter's decision. Sparring, and Thurman has a great corner, isn't the same as showing up on fight night and actually having the fight. Also, Pacquiao today at 40 has some of the fastest hands in the sport of boxing. Which sparring partner is Thurman going to be able to get who can duplicate Manny Pacquiao in sparring? Folks, when you see a fighter as singular as Pacquiao, the lightning hand speed, married to spectacular legs, Right, Pacquiao has some of the fastest feet in the game of boxing. Right, who can you get? What southpaw are you going to get who can duplicate Pacquiao's style? Let me also say this. Now, subscribers here on YouTube know that I have criticized Deontay Wilder, unbeaten reigning WBC heavyweight champion for not having a lot of tools in his tool shed, right? In other words, with Wilder, it's a straight right hand, right? Straight right hand from distance. And I'm just pointing out that, wow, this isn't the first good straight right hand from distance in heavyweight history. That against elite competition, Sooner or later, some opponent is going to be better prepared for that straight right hand than Dominique Brazil was in the last fight. Right? Wilder is going to be forced to go to a plan B. 
And my point is, there isn't the plan B there. Right? I've also pointed out that, in my opinion, and I know the judges' scorecards don't reflect this, but I've watched multiple Wilder fights. The Gerald Washington fight comes to mind. The Luis Ortiz fight comes to mind. Where Wilder's doing next to nothing in certain rounds. The Tyson Fury fight comes to mind. And, in my opinion, right, I've seen fights where he's lost several rounds together. He's not active enough. Right? Understand. There's an outcry about the scoring in the Tyson Fury fight. That's a fight where Fury gets dropped twice. And people still feel he won that fight by multiple rounds. What I want people to realize is that Manny Pacquiao, who has an A-plus straight left hand from distance, right? He steps into it. When I say from distance, I mean the guy can start the motion from outside. I know you're hearing about, you know, Manny Pacquiao having dinosaur or alligator arms. I guess that's what Keith Thurman's saying. Uh, doesn't have a long reach. Doesn't matter. Pacquiao covers a lot of ground in the ring. Look at that Matisse fight, right? Matisse is comfortable in the pocket. Pacquiao from outside the pocket just does a drop step. The punch is there and it's there with power. Right? But understand, unlike Wilder, Pacquiao has great feet. Pacquiao jumps around often before throwing that left hand. It's not as easy as me being in the ring and saying, okay, this guy's going to throw a straight right. He's standing in front of me. <laughs> Let me put a hand up. Let me get an arm bar here. Let me have something on this side of my face so I can catch the punch and protect my chin and protect my temple. Right? No, with Pacquiao, Pacquiao breaks you down with the foot movement. Right? He's moving his head. That by itself is more than what Wilder's doing. He's moving his head. He's going like this. He's jumping around. You don't know when he's going to plant his feet. You know it's a straight left, but you don't know when he's going to throw it. Right? I think Manny Pacquiao is much harder to stop than Deontay Wilder. Right? Tyson Fury against Wilder was up on his toes, was dancing around, froze Wilder, didn't it? Right? If Tyson Fury were the same size as Manny Pacquiao and he's up on his toes dancing around, what he would find is that Manny Pacquiao can get up on his toes, could dance with him, right? wouldn't give him the opportunity to just back away from the action because Pacquiao is just too cat quick. So, let me just say, in terms of timing, isn't a cat quick guy who you really can't replicate in sparring, isn't that the worst possible type of opponent for Keith Thurman to face right now? Right? Pacquiao is cat quick. Thurman is rusty. Jose Cito Lopez is a warrior, but he doesn't have Manny Pacquiao's quickness. Let's throw out the seventh round of the Thurman Jose Cito Lopez fight. Now understand, Lopez goes in that fight a heavy underdog to Thurman Nation. To his hardcore fans, let me ask you, going into that Jose Cito Lopez fight, weren't you expecting 
Thurman to stop Lopez. Just look at the odds on that fight before it went off. Wasn't this supposed to be Thurman's big return from a long period of time, more than a year out of the ring? Weren't you expecting a stoppage? Isn't it disappointing to know, even without the seventh round of that fight, that Lopez goes the distance against Thurman? Are you sure this is prime Thurman? Let me also say this too. Let's talk about Thurman's toughest fight to date. Right? I would argue, and you could take exception to this in the comment section, right? This is interactive. This isn't about me. I'm just giving you one man's opinion. Let me hear yours. Let YouTube Nation hear your opinion. I would argue that the toughest opponent the roughest fight Thurman has had from start to finish, right? Outside of individual rounds like round seven against Jose Cito Lopez, but the toughest fight he's had was the Sean Porter fight. Right? Porter, a shorter guy, just like Manny Pacquiao. Porter, very quick, very sudden just like Manny Pacquiao. Now Thurman had that fight before he missed over a year in the ring recovering from a very bad injury. Right? The Porter, excuse me, the Thurman who fights Sean Porter is prime Keith Thurman. Right? This is the Thurman before he fights Danny Garcia. This is the Thurman of 2016. Yes, it's been that long since he fought Sean Porter. Didn't Porter give him all he could handle? When that fight went to a decision, didn't you think there was a chance that Porter had won that fight? Aren't there times in that fight where Keith Thurman is on his back foot. In other words, Porter is so sudden. Porter is able to jump in so unexpectedly that even a slugger like Thurman had to rely on boxing skills. And that's Thurman before the injury. That was a close fight. Well, guess what? Now Thurman is fighting a guy with a lot of Porter's traits. A shorter fighter, like Porter, who's explosive, like Porter, but who has a much bigger punch, don't you think? So to me, this has disaster written all over it for the favorite. Right? I have a video up online about this fight already. I'm making this follow-up video because I am that surprised that Manny Pacquiao is an underdog in this fight. Understand, prime Keith Thurman, before the injury, before the layoff, never had the hand speed, almost no one does, of Manny Pacquiao. Right? Never had the hand speed. I'm telling you that a few times in life you're going to encounter what I call a freak athlete. Right? A Bo Jackson. A Deion Sanders. A Usain Bolt. Right? Some guy who physically just doesn't make sense and just looks like if he were involved in a decathlon he'd be among the top finishers whether or not he has experience in decathlons, right? Some Jim Thorpe type character. 
That's who Manny Pacquiao is. Right? Pacquiao's a guy who needs to fill up his days. I'm hearing Pacquiao plays a lot of basketball, for crying out loud. Right? Great feet, quickness. I personally have never in my life seen a 40-year-old as fast with this level of hand speed as Manny Pacquiao. As I've said in some earlier videos here, I believe Pacquiao's that unique athlete who might be able a full generation after he broke onto the scene, right? Let's remember, his big coming out party was beating Oscar De La Hoya, right? That's how long ago it is. De La Hoya now is one of boxing's biggest promoters, has been for years, right? Understand, many of the men, Manny Pacquiao fought and beat, are retired now, right? Miguel Cotto. Pacquiao's that rare athlete who a generation after his generation might be able to run the table at 147. I know it sounds crazy, right? It doesn't sound as crazy to me as picking a guy who's had one fight in the last two years as a favorite over Manny Pacquiao. Let me just say this too. Let's pick a great fighter. Guy who's beaten Pacquiao. Floyd Mayweather. If Floyd Mayweather had the injury Keith Thurman had, only had one fight in the preceding two years, and got cuffed around like Keith Thurman got cuffed around in the seventh round of the Jose Cito Lopez fight, Right? I wouldn't expect Floyd to be a favorite over Manny. Injuries are serious things in boxing. Ring rust is serious. Manny's game is the kind of game where if your timing isn't there, if you're not on your A game, how are you going to deal with this guy's speed? It's just not going to happen. Right, so, forgive me, I just get the feeling that the present is intoxicating. We buy into narratives, we like some people. Right, I like Keith Thurman, I think he is a champion's champ. You look at his resume, the fact that he fought Sean Porter, the fact that he fought Danny Garcia, Right? That's, that's noteworthy to me. But I also feel that when you're coming back from injury in a craft like boxing, you've got to work yourself back up to your A game. Thurman's punching power. He calls himself one time Thurman's punching power wasn't there against Jose Cito Lopez. Go back and look at the early knockdown of Lopez in that fight. I didn't get the feeling Lopez was in danger. Sure, Lopez got surprised by the punch. Right, but Lopez gets off the canvas. <laughs> right? Lopez, you know, nobody was thinking about throwing in the towel. Right, the referee's not concerned about Lopez. You understood, okay, this is boxing, he got caught, he went down, he's back up, okay, let's continue the fight. For the rest of the fight, I didn't see the big Thurman punching power, right? I didn't feel like I was watching old Thurman. In his prime, watching old Thurman was kind of like watching Saul Alvarez, right? You knew there was a big punch that could be dropped at any time. You knew that if he had the upper hand and the other guy was hurt, ball game. Right? This Thurman, and it's this Thurman that's fighting Manny Pacquiao. Right? This Thurman couldn't put away Jose Cito Lopez. Jose Cito Lopez is on his front foot. Understand what Robert Garcia said. Right? If Lopez had been the favorite. 
and had the round he had in round seven. Had the ref stopped the fight, no one would have said anything about it. It wouldn't have been a premature stoppage. That's the trouble Thurman's in. Also, revisit that round. Now understand, he's facing Jose Cito Lopez who doesn't have Manny Pacquiao's hand speed. He's badly hurt. I want you to look at his survival skills. You'll notice Thurman's head go back like this. At one point, he hits the side of the rope, right? Wow, if he's that bad off against Manny Pacquiao, the only way he gets let off the hook is if Manny Pacquiao lets him off the hook, like Pacquiao let Antonio Margarito off the hook, in my opinion. Right? Like Pacquiao let Chris Algieri off the hook. Right? If he's that bad off against Manny Pacquiao, just look at the end of the Lucas Matisse fight. Folks, it's game over. Let me say this too. And I believe this plays into the illusion that has Keith Thurman, one fight in the last two years, favored in this fight. I've said for years here online, that Adrian Broner is one of the better defensive fighters in boxing. Right? Every time I say that, two or three of you say, you gotta be kidding me, Dwyer. Broner doesn't take the sport seriously and all this other stuff. Broner has elite survival skills, folks. He gets knocked down by Marcus Maidana. Guess what? He wasn't stopped. He goes to the end of that fight. He fights Mikey Garcia. He doesn't have the Errol Spence jab, folks. Without it, he goes the distance against Mikey Garcia. Right? Say what you want about Broner. But understand that Broner knows how to defend himself. Broner is a guy who can be in against the great in Manny Pacquiao and find a way to go 12 rounds. Right? I don't think he beat Pacquiao. I'm not suggesting that. But what I am saying is some guys understand when to get on their horse, when to leave the pocket. Some guys understand how to be mindful of an opponent's biggest weapon, whether it's a straight left, whether it's a straight right, whatever it is. Now, I believe that the fact that Broner went the distance against Manny Pacquiao is clouding everyone's judgment, right? People are just assuming that Keith Thurman's going to go the distance against Manny Pacquiao, right? I'm not sure if that's the case. Let me say this too. Let's talk Jeff Horn. Another reason why this fight is priced the way it is. Let's remember in that Jeff Horn fight, which is in Jeff Horn's backyard, right? Let's face it. Jeff Horn was viewed as the hometown guy in that fight. But let's remember late in that fight, someone with an excellent view of the fight, the referee, goes over to Jeff Horn's corner and tells Jeff Horn, look, if you don't show me something, I'm going to stop the fight. Now, Manny Pacquiao, I believe, was so dominant, and I'm serious about this, he's so dominant that there are fights where I do believe Pacquiao has the guy badly hurt, the Miguel Cotto fight, has the guy badly hurt and decides, you know what, I'm going to take it a little bit easy on this guy. I have this fight in the bag. I'm not going to finish the guy. Right? As I said earlier, the Chris Algieri fight. There's a possibility in that Jeff Horn fight that Pacquiao thought he had the fight in the bag. Right? Didn't read the room properly. Should have realized I'm in Australia. Right? Even though people love me, they don't love me here. They actually prefer the other guy. And my crisp punching 
might not be appreciated as much as this guy's bully tactics, right? Jeff Horn's like pushing him over to the ropes and stuff like that. But understand the referee thought Horn was in trouble late in that fight to the point where the referee, I think it's like round nine or so, the referee had doubts on whether he was going to let the fight continue. He warned Jeff Horn. Well, understand, after the Horn fight, I believe Manny Pacquiao now is in that phase of his career where he realizes he can't leave things to chance. So that Matisse fight, oh, no mercy. Right? Pacquiao takes him out. Now, you're telling me that Pacquiao's fighting a guy with one fight in the last two years, a guy who doesn't have his hand speed, a guy whose punching power was such that Jose Cito Lopez goes the distance against him. Keith Thurman's interesting. Thurman has said, I plan to retire Manny Pacquiao. Thurman's a talker. But I want people to look closely at Thurman's comments. He said something else. He said, if Pacquiao beats me, I might retire. Right? Thurman's a guy who, in the two years out of the ring, has traveled a lot. And, you know, I think he got married or something like that. I'm just telling you that being a boxer is almost like being in the military. Right? Training camp versus boot camp. You're looking at your weight. You're watching your food. You're studying film. You're following a physical regimen during camp. Right? Road work and all this other stuff. When you get out of that, when you leave the sport, when you're out of the ring for several months, and you actually leave the Spartan existence you were living and actually start traveling to Europe and stuff like that. Then you're with your babe and you go into a cafe or a restaurant. You think you're counting calories there? You start thinking about what you're actually doing for a living, beating people up. Right? And you start thinking about the other things you want to do. Thurman's talking about being a boxing commentator. Right? As I said in the prior video, a lot of men have left the sport earlier than expected. Keith Thurman is 30 years old. Right? I would argue that if Thurman loses to Pacquiao, but if it's a spirited fight, Keith Thurman is in the Hall of Fame. Right? If this is his only loss, he's in the Hall of Fame. I would also argue for a guy who has also said, and keep in mind, this fight's going off in July. Thurman's already said, hey, after this fight, I'm taking the rest of the year off. Right? Think about that. I'm taking the rest of the year off. I believe if Thurman loses this fight, he'll understand it's a long way back. The only way he continues to be Keith Thurman is if he takes on guys he's beaten. Danny Garcia. Sean Porter. If he pushes himself to take on guys who have emerged since his injury. Terrence Crawford. Errol Spence. <laughs> The only way he continues being Keith Thurman, if he loses this fight, is to take on the very best. At 30, after you've been to Europe and a few cafes and after you've gotten married and stuff like that, as a lot of middle-aged people watching this video know, it's very hard to return to that level of discipline. I would not be surprised if a guy retires after this fight. I would not be surprised if the person who ends up retiring is Keith Thurman. Certainly, another bad injury. If Thurman gets another injury like the one he had, 
And if the doctor tells him you're going to be out the ring for more than a year, a lot of guys would walk away right there. I like Manny Pacquiao. I believe this bet makes itself. I'm one of those people who, when I hear that Pacquiao's fighting a guy who's had one fight in the last two years, and when I do a little research and I look at that one fight and I see the guy getting cuffed around, <laughs> like Keith Thurman got cuffed around in the seventh round of that fight, to me, this bet makes itself. I'm like, you got to be kidding. You're fighting Manny Pacquiao. Let me just say this too. If a guy were fighting, well, let's say a guy's fighting Deontay Wilder. And you heard that the guy only had one fight in two years. I know the Tyson Fury crowd is going to say, hey, our guy only had two fights in three years. Okay, fine. But let's just say Fury looked better in his fights leading up to that Wilder fight than Keith Thurman looked against Jose Cito Lopez, who was, let's be clear here, this close to taking Thurman's title. Right? Thurman looks bad in the seventh round. Take away the seventh round. That fight goes the distance, folks. Thurman wasn't able to stop him. Right? I believe Thurman did not meet expectations in that fight. So you're talking about a guy with one fight in two years who did not meet expectations in that one fight, and he's taking Manny Pacquiao, and the casino has made Pacquiao an underdog. No need to put a bow on the package. Sign me up. I'm taking the underdog in this fight. It's a risk. I will hedge it with Thurman by KO. Right? And just ask yourself, because I know Pacquiao's been involved in some fights where people disagreed with the decision. Right? That first Timothy Bradley fight. The Jeff Horn fight. When's the last time you saw a Manny Pacquiao fight that went the distance where you thought at the end of the fight that the other guy clearly beat him. I think you have to go back to the Mayweather fight. Right? I believe Mayweather is an outlier. I don't consider Keith Thurman to be Floyd Mayweather. That's how I see it. Pacquiao to win the underdog, hedged with Thurman by KO. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I look forward to your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.